10 this morning. Look around. It's a light holiday crowd. You need to sing for two. As you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who have the choosing God. Come, now is the time to You are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who plan to choose you now. Come. Now is the time to work. You are before your God. Come. 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 Amen. Nice job. Good morning, church. Happy holiday. Always a lighter crowd on the holiday weekends in the summertime. One of the blessings from COVID is our ability to stream the service and there's people in campgrounds and on boats and doing all the fun stuff in the summer that are joining us in worship this morning. So we're thankful for the ability to do that. We welcome our streaming friends. We have guests with, with us this morning. We're thrilled that you're here. If you're newer to the church, we're thrilled that you're here. If you've been around a long time, we're thrilled with that you're here. <laughs> Because it's a holiday weekend, I didn't run this by you, Pastor, but everybody's got stuff to do. There's picnics, we're busy today. I thought that we might shorten the service a little bit today. So in that light, just because I'm up here, I thought that we would do the benediction first to save time later. So for those that don't speak Christianese, the benediction is a closing prayer. And to save more time, I thought that we would use today's sermon title as the benediction to save time. So you ready for the benediction? Go! Have a good day. <laughs> I suppose we'll stick around and worship a little bit. And we're going to hear an important message this morning. Pastor Tim's going to talk to us about go, our mandate, our privilege, our responsibility to go forth and share the and to share the good news, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to talk, and we're, we, we know that we need to have some familiarity with Scripture, right? We need to have some relationship with the Word of God so that we know what it is that we know. And when we're given the opportunity where Scripture says we're to be prepared like workmen to share the good news. So we need, we need to spend some time with Scripture. We need to spend some time studying. A little plug for Denny Scalise. Sunday school is getting ready to start on the 17th get a chance to get on and, and have Sunday school, but we need to have some re relationship because we're, we're to be prepared. We know that the harvest is plentiful. We know the workers are few and we are they. So we will hear that good news today. Lots of announcements as always because this is a busy church. Let's start with a really cool idea that came from one of the members of the congregation. If you have digital pictures of any events that happened in the past calendar year, anything that's happened around the church, 
outside of the church that we're involved with. If you get, get those on a memory stick, email them to Barb. We want all the pictures we can get. We're going to use that as part of our charge conference presentation. So bring all your pictures in if you can. Give yourself a round of applause, please. When, when we do the picnic for the Ride for the Refuge, it takes a lot of volunteers. It's one of the biggest things that we do all year. Every slot is filled. All the volunteers are lined up. All the food slots are filled. Awesome job. Sandy asked that you review the sheets, the sign-up sheets, what you're supposed to bring, when you're supposed to bring it, and if you're supposed to be there, what time that would be. If there's any questions, see, we should open with this announcement. Did anyone know today is Pastor's Wife Appreciation Day? I did not know that either, but I was, was told that. And Nancy's not even here, so if she was here, we would tell her how much we appreciate her. If you see Nancy later today, oh, she's on. Hi, Nancy, we appreciate you. There she is. As usual, she's busy working. That's why she's not sitting down. Plus, uh, shout out to Eleanor. Bible study starts Tuesday, 930 in the morning, if you would like to join them again. Sunday school, 9 o'clock, September 17th. Denny's going to talk to us next week about uh, what they're going to be, be looking at. There's a note in there for a hayride, September 24th. October 1st is a hayride. That's all right. October 1st is a hayride. And uh, ladies, if you'd like to help out at the food bank, October 7th, 9 to 11.30. Jill, please. Hey, everybody. Hi. So, I know that I'm here to talk about WOW, Women of Worship. However, this is going to include the whole church. So, we're planning a road rally. It's not just for the women. We expect to see some of the guys. And it's going to be kind of a team event. We're hoping to have, we're hoping for at least 10 cars with five people per car as a max. Um, we're going to supply you with a clue to get you to the next clue and hopefully come up with some Harbor Creek history along the way. So, um, it takes place September 17th, right after church. There'll be a, a kind of a, a light lunch and bring, bring a couple bucks with you because you never know what you might have to buy along the way. Just saying. Um, so, if anybody's interested in attending, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you have any questions, see Chris, myself, Leanne, um, Sue, anybody else that you could possibly think of. Um, oh, Jerry, you forgot Jerry. Jerry, too, you can, if you have any questions. Huh? Oh, and Harold. Yeah, yeah, he's a member of WOW, what can I say? So, <laughs> So, so if anybody's interested, oh, and Dan, Dan's missing, so another member of WOW. So if, you, if you're interested, it should be a lot of fun. I guess they did this a long time ago, um, but we're going to try and revi re relive, re-something re it. So anyway, come enjoy yourself. It should be a lot of fun. That's all. Wow. Shall we pray? Only you, Lord. Only you. We give you thanks for the uh, lighthearted nature of the service this morning. We give you thanks for the laughter. We give you thanks for the music. But our focus turns at this time, and we set the business of the church aside. And we turn our eyes upon Jesus. And we ask for a special anointing of the Holy Spirit on this place this morning. A supernatural sense. We know that you're with us, Lord. But there's a lot of need in this church, and we'd ask that you would meet each person where that need is this morning, that they would be blessed in that place. We ask that you would prepare our minds and our hearts, that you would calm us, that we would worship you in a way that's pleasing to you, that we would be prepared to receive the message that you've given to Pastor Tim, that your anointing would be on him as he brings the word this morning. This time is yours, Father God. This day is yours. This week is yours. All the future is yours, Father God. And we will step into what you would have for us now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am, I, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me, from generation to generation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We believe, we believe, 
And the gates of hell will not prevail, for the power of God has torn the veil. We know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and he's coming back again. He's coming back again. We believe. Good morning, and I welcome you here on this Labor Day weekend, and 
And I believe we have something to be very thankful for this Labor Day weekend. The strike has ended, and I know a number of you are very glad of that. I will be glad to not have to, to try to praise both sides, because you can't do that very well. But uh, it's good to see that that strike has ended. We do have a number of prayer concerns uh, this morning. I do ask you to lift up Marilyn Vinny. Um, Marilyn, if you're watching, everyone here is, is, uh, is on your side, and we're, uh, we're praying for your best right now. Uh, also be with her family as they are by her side as well. Um, we do have a number of folks in the church that are also going through some some illnesses and some physical situations. Many of them don't wish to be named, so I won't do that, but uh, be, be in prayer for those folks as well. And uh, we want to continue to pray for our teachers and students and administrators. Uh, the first week is kind of nice and kind of in, but now the work begins. So let's, let's pray that they all are successful. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks this morning, Lord, for, for the fact that the strike is now over. Both sides have come to an agreement and we can get back to work and get back to taking care of our families and taking care of the things that need to be done. Along with producing and manufacturing that which needs to be done. So we thank you for bringing both sides together. We thank you for being able to live in a land where we can work. Where no job is too small. Every job is important and we need to recognize all those who labor, whether it's the janitor or the CEO. We thank you for everyone as they do their time and do their job to the best of their ability. We do lift up to you this morning, Almighty God, uh, Marilyn, and we just pray, Lord, that you give her peace at this time Give her comfort. Surround her with friends and loved ones. We thank you for her. We thank you for all that she has meant to everyone here at South Harbor Creek. We lift up all who are going through difficult times right now, and those who are struggling both mentally and physically and emotionally, perhaps financially. Lord, guide them and direct them down the path they need to go to find relief and comfort. Lord, we thank you for this place, a place where we can come together and rejoice with one another, love one another, and celebrate your love for us. And we ask all these things this morning through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Okay, so what is this? A feather, yep. What is this? A bird's nest, yep. Okay, remember that. So I got to go, well, I had planned a vacation. It didn't go as planned. My husband and I were gonna go camping for two weeks. He had a work emergency, so he only got to come home on the weekends, or down on the weekends, so Lovey and I had a little vacation. But unfortunately, Lovey, our dog, has had a uh, really bad health diagnosis. It's not curable. So we used to do a lot of hiking, and she couldn't do that anymore. So that was another big change, but it was okay. One evening, it really, really rained hard. And I got up in the morning, stepped outside. It smelled so great, that, that rain fresh smell. We all know that smell. The, the big billowy clouds and the raindrops were hanging off the trees and the, gl the grass still had the raindrops on and the way the sun filtered through, it made it look like diamonds. It was just gorgeous. And as I'm standing looking, I'm hearing, be still. So I looked and I kept looking at how stunning it was outside and I got it. God creates all this beauty for us and we don't take the time to look at it. We don't take that one, one second, one minute and just say, this is stunning, this is so beautiful. So, this feather, this is from a red-tailed hawk. I've never seen a feather like this. Lots of turkey feathers, lots of other bird feathers, but this is pretty cool. This bird's nest is not made out of grass and mud. This is made out of horse hair from their manes and their tails. Look at how perfect this bird made it. So we looked at it, we saw, but we really didn't see how special this was. So I have a couple pictures. So as we're camping, these little salamanders, you just gotta love them, they're so stinking cute. <laughs> okay, next. This is called chicken of the woods. This is actually edible but I brought groceries so it wasn't necessary. <laughs> Next. This is called a cauliflower mushroom. Again, it's edible and I still had groceries. Next. This is Lovey, but in front of her, you see those little white things? Do you think that's a mushroom or a fungus or something else? It's actually a wildflower. That's how it's listed, and it's called Indian pipe or ghost pipe. So pretty cool because to me it just looks like a fungus or something. Next. This is a rotting tree, but look at it. It looks like praying hands. You know, when you first glance, it's like, oh my goodness. Next. This is creepy. I just added it for you guys. Um, when I first looked at it, I saw the first big snake and did not notice that there's another creepy at the end. So thankfully, we're about 30 feet up on a bridge, but they're still pretty big. Okay, I'm good. Yes. It looks what? A worm? I didn't think it looked like a worm. It looked like anaconda to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this church, for these children. Thank you for giving me the message to be still. And I hope all of us can take this to heart and take that one second and thank God for all this beauty that he created for us to enjoy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Won't you please stand for the hymn? Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise again for all the blessings that we enjoy, the blessings that you provide for us even when we're not looking, even that of a feather and a nest. Lord, we ask you now to receive our gifts, bless them, multiply them, use them for your will to further your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. seated. I have to laugh at, at, at Kim when she says, be still. If you know Kim, that is the last thing she can do. <laughs> Our New Testament lesson today comes from Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. Paul writes these words. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. One of 
One of the hardest things that we have to do as humans is to get out of our comfort zone, isn't it? We get into our routines, we get into our, our normal daily lives, and it's difficult at times to step out of that and go. This week, <clears throat> we sent our children off to school, didn't we? Some of you sent some kindergartners. And I would imagine there were a few folks with tears in their eyes. But we said, go, didn't we? Get on the bus, go. Some of you sent your children to middle school for the first time. And, you know, those of us that remember middle school, usually it's not the fondest two or three years of our lives. But again, we said go. Some of you sent your children to high school for the first time, and probably around ninth grade, I think most high schools are now. And while that can be a very daunting time for a young person because they're entering into a, a world that is suddenly becoming much bigger, they themselves are going through various changes in their lives. And we said, go. Still others of you sent your children off to college in the last couple of weeks, perhaps for the first time. And while that can also be a very, very new and very daunting and perhaps even a very anxious time as we send our kids into a, a place where they suddenly have to begin to fend for themselves. But we say go, don't we? Go. We tell them to go. There's trepidation, there's anxiety. Maybe you start a new job and there's trepidation with your new job because you aren't quite sure exactly what's expected. You don't know the people you're going to be working with. So there's that anxiety with all of that. But we again, we say go. Because it's to your benefit to go. Matthew 28, 16 it's the last commandment Jesus gave us. Go, he said. Go into the world to make disciples. Go. Yet, despite the fact that Jesus has told us to go, we are still reluctant, aren't we? It can sometimes be very difficult to do just that, to Go. So we start with Moses this morning. And, you know, Moses is a, is, is a great story, and, and we all love Moses, and we love the whole, the whole uh, Exodus story, and, and it goes on for quite a few chapters, and it's just a lot of fun to read. But here we have this guy. He's just shepherding some sheep, and he's up on a mountain, and all of a sudden he notices that there is a bush on fire but it does not seem to be consumed. So he goes to try to check it out, as we all would. We would sort of check that out, and then he hears the voice of God. And what's God say to him? Go. God is telling Moses to go back to Egypt and bring his people, the Israelites, out of the land of bondage. Okay, but I don't speak real well, but what if the Israelites won't listen to me, but what if Pharaoh won't let them go? But isn't that us? Isn't that us as well? 
Don't we have a hundred excuses for not going? We're busy. Our kids are involved in too much stuff. we got all these things going on in our life. We don't have time to go. But this is where the bush is so important to me in this story. As I was reading this story this week, the bush stuck out for me. Because the bush is on fire. Every one of us has sat around a fire at one time or another, or we've seen something on fire. And what happens? It gets consumed, doesn't it? It doesn't just stay there. It, it, it gets consumed by the fire. But the bush is not consumed. The bush has a message for Moses. Go, you will not be consumed. You need not fear the unknown. Because God is there to protect you. God, is, has, who has told you to go, has told you where to go, will not leave you high and dry to be hurt or injured in any way. The bush was on fire, but it was not consumed. So why are we to go? Why are we called to go? Paul writes in, to the Romans this morning, he talks about what love is. And you know, we, our, his famous uh, words come in 1 Corinthians 13, what love is. But here is, a, is another example of what love is. And, and love is not a feeling, is it? It's not just something that, you know, you know, we see on TV. Love is an action. Love means doing something. Love means going. And for Paul, he gives us a whole list of reasons, or a whole, yeah, basically a whole list of reasons where to go. The primary reason is, Christ died for us. Christ showed his love for each one of us by dying for us, by, by giving himself up, by paying the price for our salvation so that you and I who believe can be with him in glory. So if we truly have Christ's love in our hearts, we need to share that with others. We need to go. We needed to be devoted to one another, honor one another, never lack zeal for the Lord, be joyful and patient even in affliction. I know that's a tough one for me. Be faithful in prayer, share with those in need, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you. Didn't we just talk about that a week or so ago? Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another. Some of us struggle with that one. Do not be proud, do not be conceited, do not repay evil for evil. As it is possible, live at peace with one another. Do not take revenge. That's one I think we probably all struggle with a time or two. If the enemy is hungry, feed him. What? Are you serious? I don't like this guy. Why am I going to give him food? But that's what we're to do. If he is thirsty, give him drink. Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, we are called to go. We all have our excuses, every one of us, and I'm no different than you. We're busy, we have jobs, we have families, we have lives, we've got to do this, we've got to go here, we've got to go there. The list goes on. Now, I have been told that the history of this church has been, it's been very mission-minded. 
And I believe that because I have seen over the last year a lot of the things that you have done. You have gone. In the winter, you went to the homeless shelter and fed those who were hungry and in need. Tomorrow, many of you are going to be at the Ride for the Refuge, helping, helping Yuma um, take care of homeless people. We've had many things over the last year that have shown how mission-minded this church is. In another several months, there's going to be a mission trip to the Dominican Republic, and many of you are already considering going on that trip. That's great. Now, you can't do everything, but you can do something. And whatever that is, we need to go. Remember, the bush was not consumed. Going to a new place, doing a new thing may sometimes be very difficult, may, may even bring us a little anxiety in our hearts and souls because we're, we're going to a place we're unaware we're doing something we've never done before. But I promise you, like the bush, you will not be consumed. And the reality is, if you go, you will find more joy and more happiness and more peace in your soul than you can believe and that you can even imagine. The bush was not consumed. Because Moses went, neither will we when we go. Go. Let us pray. Lord, we take this time to be reminded, reminded of your love for us, the fact that you sent your son to pay a price we could not pay. As we go forth in this communion service, Remind each of us of just how much you love us, that we may go forth and love others as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Christ our Lord invites all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like, like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, pro proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves and praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our table is open. To all who believe and desire to live in harmony with one another, we invite you to come to remember that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us.
who came for you and for me and all the world that we might have life with him. My ushers, please come forward. Come, receive the body and blood of Christ. Trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing. All you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine. Crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. You are breaking new Make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring you right out of me. Jesus, bring you right out of me. Jesus, bring you Jesus, bring you right out of me. 
everyone receive communion who desired so? If not, we raise your hand and we will come back and serve. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, thank you for sending your son. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us so much and feeding us in this simple meal so that one day we can rejoice with you in that glorious table. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my name, that you would bear my heart. the orphan, a son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory, who with the nations, with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the king of glory, the king above all things. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. When we say go, it not only means go to some far and distant land, go into your schools, go into your workplaces, go into your restaurants, wherever people gather, be Jesus. 
Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord give us the courage and the strength to go. Go and make disciples for Jesus Christ now and forevermore.